Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how to finish off this journal. So we have been working on it for a few weeks now. I apologize for not being able to get the video up and out sooner. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at today is stitching this spine. So I got cut off in the last video, so I thought I'd just uh, start the video by, you know, completely sort of walking you through this step i don't um speed it up or anything so if you were a little bit unsure last time this should help you out and um you'll be able to do it easily so if you have already done the spine you can skip forward about 10 minutes and just get into the next part but uh let's just go back and relook at this spine so uh, this is actually a good idea anyway, even if you have done the spine. What I am doing here is kind of um, re-stitching it for you on a piece of cardstock. But this ends up being a really nice bookmark that I can actually use in the journal. So I start to measure it out for you kind of here. And I'm telling you there's um, four holes across and three holes down. But I actually, um, in a minute, I will go through and actually measure it out, give you the measurements. And I'm also just showing you there that because we've broken this up into two pieces, if you have a longer book, you can still do the same thing. You know, you just measure it from where you want it to sit on the top and the bottom of that book. But the nice thing about this is you can uh, do any size. So this is a two and a half inch spine and I have done... Um, I believe 9 sixteenths of an inch in between each hole here and then down this way I've done 6 eighths of an inch so I just counted along uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for every second hole and then I would put the dot there uh, and I'll go over this again in a minute but as I said in the last video you can actually bind the entire book this way, but I've broken it into two different sections so that if you are a beginner, this is going to be really simple and it's actually a fun way. There's a lot of different things you can do here. So, uh, for example, you know, you could bead the uh, cover here or um, do some straight stitches and weave it. So we're just breaking it up into the spine creating sort of a faux spine as if it's bound like that but it's just it's just making it easier and then we're going to bind it the easiest way possible as well having said that uh, this whole process is quite lengthy I can see why people do actual courses on this because it, it's taken me a long time there was about 80 minutes of footage to edit plus you know that that wasn't even everything I had done so you know prepare be prepared to kind of sit down for a couple of hours and work on this but once you've finished it it's going to be so beautiful okay so you can see from this i've written up with gold ink on what's going to be the outside of the spine so we don't get confused so i wanted the spine to look like the spine on the book so that we know that is the outside of the spine and then we when we turn the uh, card over that's going to be the inside because the stitches will look different on the outside they should lo look like this like cross stitches and then on the inside they will be just straight up and down okay so I like to start at the bottom uh, right corner you can start at the top but I just like to start at the bottom so I am um, pulling that through and I'm leaving a little tail so we're not tying it off we're not tying it up we're just holding that um, tail and making sure that it doesn't come out and then um, when we have the outside of the spine it, we're just going to go diagonally across the row here so when we come to the back we're going to be stitching down so into a straight line Thank you. 
So a couple of things I'll mention here. This is the cotton thread. It I'll link it below. It is linked in the other video as well, but um, this is a very easy cotton to pull through. It doesn't really uh, knot or twist or anything like that, but if you are having problems with it twisting, just hold your book up and let the thread dangle and it should untwist. And so you can also see here that we are doubling up these uh, stitches at the back. So there will be uh, two threads at the back there in one of those stitches to create this pattern, the diamond pattern. And I'm actually glad uh, what happened just here, did it just happen? The um, So see there, I did not leave enough room when I put the cotton through. You want to try and make sure that the holes are large enough that the when you put your needle back through, you're not going through the middle of the other piece of cotton. Um, you want you want to sort of find a piece of the hole on the side where you can just cleanly put your needle through, um, because otherwise it'll kind of twist the the um, cotton together. So that's just a, another tip. Okay, so once that is completed, we will, uh, the threads find each other back at the beginning and then we just tie that off. And I actually like to tie it off closer to one of the holes. So it doesn't matter, you pick, but just, uh, it, it doesn't make a dent. It's sort of the knot will go into that hole a little bit um, and not dent the spine or anything. But uh, the first two holes I pull tightly, firmly, but not overly tightly. And then the third time that I tie it, I actually give it a good yank. You don't want to pull um, too tightly on the first two times so that um, you are putting pressure on those holes, if that makes sense. And so that was in real time. So it doesn't take very long. It looks so effective. So... Um, if you were to actually bind the book this way and you were trying to uh, put the needle through the spine and then a signature, it becomes really cumbersome. So um, this way you have the effect where it looks like you've done this really complicated 
binding but you've actually it's just a faux stitch so anyway um and we also have the added benefit that the uh the text block is not going to be attached to the spine so that the book's going to open flat as well so you can see there i i'm actually really excited that i have this extra um bookmark but anyway so here i'm going to show you so the the spine is two and a half across and six inches up and then uh, i'm just showing you there that sort of on these ones along there's about a quarter of an inch um and then in between there there is nine sixteenths of an inch so it's a little bit fiddly to first um, figure out the dimensions of this part but once you do have it you can use this as a template for any other you know bookmarks or other books and then you can go down six eighths of an inch three times and you'll have those holes so i i think i get the ruler here and i'll show you that as well And so the other thing is um, if you have a shorter spine, like only an inch or so, you could still do two um, holes or three holes across. So uh, you can shorten this and you'll still get a really pretty pattern. Okay, I am not sure what happened to the ruler part, but hopefully it's all in the footage and um, it's explained well enough that you can kind of uh, understand it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down the bottom and I, I will try and figure out if I can get a template of this to you somehow. But uh, here I have my pretty much almost finished signatures. So I didn't quite get to finish as many of the things that I wanted to do to put in there. But I'm pretty happy with it. So and I could probably add a few things later. So we have this piece of cardstock, which I believe we talked about last time. So there's almost two inches on the side there that I've left. And I have scored down, um, you know, leaving the about two and a half inch spine. And that just means to sort of make a mark in the paper. So it's, it's going to crease um, very easily and very neatly, you can see there. So... Um, you don't have to have like a scoring board you can just use uh, something that you have like the back of your scissors or something I use this tiny little ball tool that I think is for clay but anyway um, so what I've decided here I wasn't sort of sure what to do yet but um, we're going to just use the same template and we're going to go through the second row of holes uh, from the top and the bottom and we're just punching those holes in now if you want to reinforce this cardstock so you might want to put two um, layers of cardstock I think for the fact that this is a small book this is sort of a pocket size book and I made it hang out the edge so it's trying to make it a bit more of an A6 um, but you can see that we're just going to go from the back through to the front and then tie it off so this is really simple it's just two holes and it's just the one um, loop through and we're going to tie it off where you can't see it so that knot will be hidden in the spine so it's a really clean look and it's a very simple um, stitch you know I didn't want to sort of even if we added one extra uh, hole there to do a pamphlet stitch it's going to take more time um, you know and it's a bit more fiddly so this way it's going to be really nice and I also found this length of, it's half a yard of Chantilly lace that I'm going to use as a closure. So I'm just going to quickly run you through a couple of the signatures here so you can see the kind of things that I'm putting in. So this is from Michael's and it was an off cut. And so I just used two pieces and washi taped them together and that's going to be the outside of the signature. And then I have a couple of really thin pieces of scraps that I just want to put in I like the um, I just like the color or you know the pattern of them 
I have that's a piece of the aged watercolor paper which I have a tutorial on how to do I love that stuff and then some transparencies parchment paper um, I have some craft paper I have uh, some printables from my shop from the spring promenade a6 collection and then I also have this uh, thicker cotton uh, so it's called heavyweight book um, but it's from Hollanders it's really nice so it's Somerset cotton and I want to use that for watercolor in the book uh, and you can see there this is a uh, printable that um, I printed back and front and it came out upside down so I'm just popping that in there because it's an art journal this is you know fine for that kind of thing okay so now we are getting into uh, the actual binding of the book so the first thing that I do here is I go through and I, I do take my time here so I think I've sped this up a bit but you, you th this is the part where the book everything's going to lay exactly how you place it so I take time here to make sure that every piece of paper is exactly where I want it if I want to lift anything up or bring anything down uh, this is the time to do it and once that's done we're going to clip just the back so you can see there I've actually got some silk or ganza so you can use a um, bit of old t-shirt fabric some cheesecloth anything like that but something there will help the clips not to give the paper an indentation and so once the back is clipped I go back and I will check the front just to check that everything is where I placed it because sometimes when you're doing this step things might move a little bit okay so once I'm happy with that I am going to grab our template again and I'm just going to lay that in there and basically sort of measure with my pencil there again at the second hole so the second hole there and then the second hole at the top just gonna do a little pencil mark and that's where we're going to um, make some holes so I am getting my all you can use a pin um, or something like that like a thumbtack as well uh, it just you might have to do just two or three papers at a time so I just you can get these off uh, Amazon and I don't really have a preference um, for one that I've found yet but uh, so basically now that we've got the holes punched we grab the end paper and you can see here that I keep sort of having breaks or have to go do something so um, this took quite a while but so to strengthen the back I'm going to use this piece of lace you can use chul or cheesecloth or a bit of fabric something like that um, I found this piece of lace I didn't want to use it and somewhere where it would be sort of disappear but then I thought um, it had at least it had looked nice for the tutorial so I was okay with it but um, yeah so you want something some piece of fabric at the back will just help strengthen it and then we're going to get our embroidery floss so the one that I'm using is already cut into lengths which are a pretty decent size for what we're doing and you can see here that I am grabbing one from the top so the whole thing will bunch up and then it will fall back into place and that is that's a trick that I learned off a lady at an embroidery shop and it's the easiest way to get embroidery floss um, separated if you try and like pull it apart um, it just tangles so you actually just want to pull it straight up and let everything bunch up and then it'll just fall back to normal okay so because we're only doing the one uh, stitch we want the thread doubled up so you you sort of make the halves equal when you um, put the thread and then we're going to put it in from the back to the front and now we have to uh, put the needle in through the signature which is this little bunch of uh, like this little booklet that we just made and so you want to make sure you have the first signature and you just put the um, needle through the same hole so if you went through the bottom hole you want to put it through the bottom hole here
and so you can see this is kind of fiddly so but again I've tried to simplify this so it's the easiest way possible for you to bind the book and it's still going to be very strong and sturdy so you can see that once you've stitched that back through the signature and back through the sort of faux spine here we are going to tie it off and again I like to tie the knot close to one of the holes so that it um, sort of sits in that hole it's not going to put a dent in the middle of the book somewhere so again I the first two times I make the knot I don't put pressure on the string so it's cutting into those um, holes I just tie it quite firmly but not too firmly and then the last time you can give it a really good uh, hard pull there so there you can see that it's really um, comfortably in there and we're on our way to having a finished book so we have completed the first signature and we just unclip everything uh, check to make sure everything's fine if at this point uh, there's a problem you can always just snip the embroidery thread and try again and so I start the whole process again with the next bunch of papers so again I'm going through checking if everything um, is exactly where I want it I bring over the template we punch the holes put the um, clips on and then we start again so I'm just going to let you watch this and I will just sort of interject if I have something to say Again, you can see I always like to check the papers. So like on the next signature, the first part uh, is a bit too high once I did that. So I can take that apart and um, check that. And then the other thing is when you're uh, doing this part, some people like to lay the signature in the middle of like a yellow pages or something like that and poke the holes through so that your fingers are out of the way. But I just generally keep my fingers on either side of the book so you can kind of feel where you're going to um, punch the hole and you just try and keep your fingers away from that area
okay so at this point it was getting really late and you can see there that I have tied the knot and for some reason it wasn't tight enough so again that's just something to be cautious about and um, rather than getting frustrated especially if this is like your first time doing it um, when you're tired or you are you know in a rush um, just maybe wait and take your time walk away let your brain kind of reset and then come back to it um, like I'll even just have a, you can see there like when I was frustrated I just pull the camera down and I will film a different angle or something like that just to let my brain reset Okay, so at this point I am actually feeling really excited and there's one more signature to go and the, the book is actually feeling quite full though so I wasn't sure if I would need the fourth signature or not so I just kind of have a little uh, try here and kind of test this out to see does it feel like um, comfortable without the other signature but then I do feel like I want it in there I feel like it sort of sits nicer when it's in there and this one is actually quite a thin one because I sort of didn't finish a few of the pages that I wanted to anyway so and I really wanted some of these papers in here so I am happy that I put it in and um, yeah we're just about finished So one thing I forgot to mention is you can see here that I am alternating where I tie the knots. So I tied two of them down and then at the bottom hole and I tied two of them up towards the top so that it sits evenly and it's not sort of um, four knots in a row in the bottom or the top. Okay, so at this point I am really happy with how it's turned out. Everything is, you know, it's quite firm. Like I was worried just doing the uh, two holes would not be enough, you know, wouldn't feel strong enough. But it definitely feels strong enough. And if you do want extra strength, you can look up um, how to do a pamphlet stitch. And that's a three hole stitch. And you can certainly do that and add a bit more strength. But I feel like... Um, for what I'm intending it for, I think this is definitely strong enough. Okay, so all we have left to do now is to adhere the front and the back flap. Um, and actually, before I did this, I did actually do I did actually do the same thing we did in the inside of the spine. So in the last video, I showed you how we just put some glue over the um, spine. And I also did that just on the, um, you know, on the knots there. So <laughs> I'm tired again. But on the knots there, so um, yeah, so that keeps it in place. But you can see here I'm using this scrapbook um, 
so it's a double sided adhesive from scrapbook.com you can see how tired I am the I didn't even take the um the brown part off <laughs> before I put the next tape on but what I'm showing you here is I just did it in a U shape and I left a little bit in the middle so we can have like a little tuck spot there as well at the beginning of the book if you want one so you don't need to do that you can actually just adhere the whole thing if you're worried about that but I just left a little bit of an opening there so and it worked out quite nicely so there's a little bit of room there to uh, tuck something in so this um, double-sided adhesive is permanent and it's very strong and I also added some glue so because that is going to be what holds the text block in place you do want it to be strong adhesive so just go with whichever um, one you feel comfortable with and you can see there that is the little tuck spot so Okay, so before adhering the back down, I want to add this piece of lace here. So you could add a ribbon or any other sort of um, closure that you want there. And I just added that on before putting the... Um, I actually haven't glued the back on yet because I, I'm thinking I might want to add um, something else. So anyway... Um, I might show you that next week so I haven't actually glued the back on but the book is working um, and yeah I'm really loving it so I'll give you a little flip through of the final book here and basically what we've created is a junk journal so you can use this as a part journal part art journal I want to just use it as an art journal just to try out supplies to sketch um, I have a different junk journal and you know that's more for recording things this one I just want to be able to pick up and not have to um, write anything it's just purely for art and you can see here I've made some really extra long pieces of paper that flip out there's some envelopes in here so you can be as creative as you'd like with these inserts this is a part of a Beam Paints cotton wax canvas that the order was um, in. And then there's some silk pages, transparency pockets. So there are a few, um, let's see, printables in there that I am supposed to have had out this week. Well, last week, I'm I'm so behind with everything. But um, so I have added a couple of printables in there that aren't in the shop yet. Uh, and if you are here from the Heirloom Lux um, YouTube, I haven't forgotten you. I am using the time for that um, YouTube to create some new journals and some new printables so they're going to be beautiful um, I actually had a play with some tonight so I printed some out to check them and everything and I think you guys are going to absolutely love them so they should hopefully be up next week and so I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the things I will be using in here so firstly we have colored pencils these are my little 12 um, pencil palette or 16 is it that I have on the channel and then some uh, I've got these little random boxes of art supplies that I have collected over the last few years that I just have never played with or tried or known kind of where to even try them or what to do with them I just saw them and loved them so uh, also my favorite inks and some stencils and just all kinds of things that I'd like to try in here 
So we will definitely do some videos on how I'm using this and um, do some pages together. And I'm actually really excited to try out the Somerset Heavyweight heavyweight cotton. I think I've had it before and I really liked it so with watercolors so you can see here we will definitely be using watercolors and the funny thing is um, I did this little setup for the last videos and deja vu I just seem to be making the same type of set over and over. But anyway um, so I think the last thing was I just wanted to show the size of it so this is my A6 Chic Sparrow and you can see it's a bit narrower so it's like a field note size book and then this is a standard size journal um, like a standard size traveler's notebook so I don't know if that gives you a good size reference when I ordered it, I thought it was like a 5 by 7 a B6 inch, and yeah, it's quite small, so I still really love it, and I think it's going to work well um, for what I want it um, to do. I'm also going to link below another video I did on a no-sew uh, journal, which is, it literally takes under 20 minutes to put the whole thing together, so if this is a bit too big of a project, I think you'll enjoy the other one. Um, and that is it for today so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get another video up this week because this was so lengthy but I will definitely see you guys next week I hope you have a good weekend bye